Peace and blessings, kings and queens. You're in tune to Got Kush TV, the UK's number one conscious platform. And we have a very special, special interview for you today. We're going to be getting into things psychedelic. We're going to be getting into things sacramental. We are going to be discussing the marijuana, the cannabis, the cushion pen, and all other such substances known as psychedelics. And the, the best man to deal with this particular subject, kings and queens, is the man sitting beside me right about now. He goes by the name of brother Darren Springer. Greetings, bro. Greetings, brother. Good to see you. Bless you. How you doing? You good? I'm good, man. Very good. Good, good, good. All right. Cool, cool, cool. So, first of all, bro, yeah, this is a... Uh, uh, you might say off the beat and track subject, yeah. Mm -hmm. But so we have to let the people them know who you are, what you do, um, and before we get into the actual meat of the subject itself. Sure, nice cool, brother. So, like you said, my name is Darren Springer, also known as Darren the Baron on the social media. Mm -hmm. um, I wear many hats, bro. You know, and primarily, if I go, we could go back for the last 15, 20 years, mm -hmm. I've been in the conscious community. Mm -hmm. I set up an organization called Asian Future. Mm -hmm. And we was known working very closely with Moata Books, Sister Rosanna Lewis. Yes, and yes. We worked for years just bringing over different speakers, mm -hmm. people like Kalinde E, mm -hmm. Bobby Hemet, Phil Valentine, Renoko Rashidi, mm -hmm. name it, mm -hmm. classic historians, right through to the metaphysicians. Yes, sir. We used to work with them, bringing them over, putting on events. Mm -hmm. That was part and parcel of me also setting up a supplementary school in our community. So it's right. primarily for homeschool children, mm -hmm. people mm -hmm. of colour, people of African heritage. Mm -hmm. And that's what you know. That's what I've been doing, grafting in our community for 15, 20 years or so. Mm -hmm. Outside of that, I've got a background in horticulture, right. working with young people, primarily setting up food enterprise, doing right. food, organic food growing mm -hmm. in the community, helping them set up little businesses and that. Our ideas that we get them from selling weed bags to salad bags. You know, so <laughs> shakies, shakies of salad all, all around the hood, giving them tangible alternatives. Right. And outside of that, on my personal journey and spiritual mm -hmm. development, I came across many of the key speakers that I brought over and worked with. Mm -hmm. But it led me to really building a tight relationship with Kalinde E, who presented me and introduced me really to the science of these power plants as we refer to them psychedelics. Right. And then for about the last seven to eight years, I've been traveling, talking, teaching, sharing what I've learned about it, my experiences, as well as what the elders have taught me about this. All right, so we're, we're going to get into Kalinda in, in, in a bit, yeah. Sure. But um, but I, I do I do notice that you're wearing a, a very appropriate T-shirt right now because there is them people in the Parliament Funkadelic are the people in the you know the psychedelic funk, you know what I'm saying? Well, that's what that's they're the kings well, of that, definitely. the kings and queens of that still. One of my favorite albums as well, by the way. Um, but the reality is, yeah, the reality is that um, this is like I said, it's a, it's an off the beaten track subject, especially because yeah. When you say psychedelics, yeah, like most of us in our community, we know about ganja and that we know about mm -hmm. like that, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but so, does psychedelics take into consideration more than just marijuana? Most definitely, yeah. Right. When we're looking at marijuana specifically, it's not a classic psychedelic. It doesn't right. come in the family mm -hmm. of what we would traditionally call mm -hmm. in the psychedelic community psychedelics. Yes. Um, simply because there's active ingredients mm -hmm. in these psychedelics mm -hmm. that work with certain parts of your body. Right. And the active ingredients within marijuana mm -hmm. have work with other aspects of your body. Right. Or your psyche or the neurological receptors inside of your brain. Right. And therefore it has different types of ex effects, therefore right. different experiences. Right. So um, what we would consider a high dose, pure mm -hmm. ganja experience, yes. it will line you up to what we would classically call a psychedelic experience. Okay. But I'll make it very clear we're talking about two different two worlds. Different things. Two All different things. Right. Alright, so just break it down then, yeah? Like, um, science, we, we, we're going to have to get to some science now. Yeah, and I'm not a scientist in it, just so no, you know. No, no, yeah. that's fine, but, but you, might, you might be able to answer the question yeah. in the sense of it, the difference, but I'm, and I'm trying, I'm trying to gauge it in comparison to most people's experience, mm -hmm. yeah? Mm -hmm. So if we're dealing with the, the marijuana, what aspects of the body or the brain is that aligning with different to what you what you refer to as psychedelics? Okay, so primarily what we're looking at is the receptors, your dope it's like um, connected with your serotonin and your dopamine receptors. Mm -hmm. So that's what's going on inside the brain. Mm -hmm. But what we're looking at is in what the specific neurological pathways as they refer to mm -hmm. which ones it's not even so much opens up it's the ones that it shuts down right. to allow you to become so it's like in regards to um the classic psychedelics they're called trip people say oh you're tripping mm -hmm. you know that's a slang term mm -hmm. but that comes from the group of psychedelics that they're from are known as tryptamines right, right and that right. corresponds with the tryptamines elements that you've got inside of your trip own to so me. trip to me so we so thought we, just, we were just talking about like a uh, we took the word trip and turn it into a slang but it's actually a scientific terminology yeah, trip to sure, me. yeah. so okay. trip to me is actually mm -hmm. an active you know family of 
um, chemicals right. that you find naturally inside the human body. Right. These same psychedelics that I'm referring to mm -hmm. are the same chemicals that you just find in nature. Okay. So your body knows what to do with this. Okay. Whereas in, in, in all of these, so you've got cannab can cannabinoid receptors yes. in the brain yes. that are naturally able to receive the chemicals that you get from cannabis. Right. But whereas these psychedelics, these chemicals are actually naturally just inside of you already. Right, right, so right. it's like a, there's a difference in the way that the you way connect with it and the way that you experience these experiences. You, you call them plants of power. Yeah, so yeah. I, I, I'm assuming that we're still talking about herbs. So we're talking about herbs, plants, but in particular with mushrooms, no, because they're actually not a plant. They're not they're, they've got their own kingdom, they're the fungal kingdom. Yeah. Right? So, whole another a whole next sphere, year because that's what okay. i primarily deal with that's what the elder kalinde yes. came through with the knowledge of mushrooms in particular because yes. when we're dealing with these sciences what we're looking at is the mushrooms actually just being uh, mushrooms predate plants full stop by yes. over 500 yes. million years yes. you know what i'm yes. saying yes. mushrooms are basically the mother of this planet yes they're the ones that, that they're the plants for lack of a better word or the kingdom that holds most of the information okay actually predates earth okay so we're dealing with actually alien technology when we're talking about mushrooms alien, yeah, alien gone technology. extraterrestrial yeah, yeah, okay alien so name some of these plants then so you know the common ones are obviously magic mushrooms mm -hmm. really popular mm -hmm. lsd is another popular psychedelic again LSD, is lsd a plant though no but lsd right. the synthetic lsd you mm -hmm. find in nature as well yes, yes. so lsd commonly um, is a is derived from a chemical known as LSA, and that's another fungal chemical that you find in nature on grains and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So back in chemic, we were dealing with the sciences, mm -hmm. we were dealing with LSD, we were dealing with magic mushrooms. We just don't call it the terms that we call refer them today. Mm -hmm. One of the other popular power plants that are out there that a lot of people talk about is ayahuasca. Mm -hmm. so I'm not sure if you're familiar with ayahuasca. Yeah, 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 so that's like a, a plant, in my humble opinion, that's been gifted to the people in South America. Yes. So that has their own technology and it has their DNA, their information in that plant because they're from that soil. Right. Whereas you go to places like on our, you know, the continent of Africa, mm -hmm. and we've got a very diverse range of plants, just lack of knowledge of them. Mm -hmm. But we also have, you know, like Iboga, that's a very popular one at the mm -hmm. moment that's mm -hmm. been put out there in particular because it's really good for like heroin addiction, alcohol addiction, and recovery and stuff like that. Interesting. So for the most part the scientists that are delving into the subject mm -hmm. that's how they're presenting it you know Ebola is good for heroin addiction Ebola mm -hmm. is good for alcohol recovery trauma and all that good stuff which is good stuff and very useful because we've got a lot of that in our community you know mm -hmm. drug addiction mm -hmm. alcoholism and so forth mm -hmm. but as a punter as somebody as a student going in there listening to these subjects mm -hmm. I'm like but hold on a minute like do we have heroin addicts in Gabon you know in the Congo right, where these plants right, are from do we right. have these issues or challenges mm -hmm. as to is this what these plants are for or mm -hmm. you know is this how you're finding a use a, a, a vehicle right. for them, you know what I mean? Quite taken. So with that said, I come to find out, no, that's not what we use these plants for, mm -hmm. but we do have these plants in, you know, in our land. You know, we were being taught many a times, you know, that, you know, we've been disconnected mm -hmm. from our culture, our religion, our traditions, and we have been, mm -hmm. but it's still there, it's present. And, you know, we've I, I discovered or re-uncovered for myself, mm -hmm. just the oldest people that we could find, that we talk about in our schools or thought, in mm -hmm. our history classes, mm -hmm. and to find out that's what they deal with, that's mm -hmm. what they've been dealing with, and they haven't stopped dealing with it. You know okay. I mean? We right. have an unbroken link to yes, this day yes, of, yes. of our people dealing with dealing this stuff. With these yeah, now, you touched on something there in terms of um, addiction, yeah, and and I know some people are thinking, right, like, what are people that want to talk about Pangakush TV? <laughs> it's like they want people to take drugs, yeah? So, so in, in that sense now, when you talk about it being like a, 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 a treatment, for addiction, sure. yeah. Yeah, yeah, like it uh, is. Does that suggest then that the addictive uh, capacity of what you are referring to is very minimal? Yeah, they. I can actually sit here company and say they're non-addictive. Right. Like they don't. The way that addictive drugs work. Right. There's a particular process that it takes on the body. Again, a scientific process. Right. Where you would be fiending for that. Right. For that hit, whatever right. it is. Right. It could be a cup of coffee. Okay. You know I mean, yes. it works in the same way. Yes. Yes. But the yes. way that these. Um, plants or these chemicals work with inside of you, mm -hmm. they're not actually non-addictive. Okay. Into the, even in your own psyche, you have to question yourself when you want to take these things. It's not a thing where it's making you feel like, well, I need to go take more of it. Right, like, right. There'll be nights where you're like, well, I don't want to take this thing. Right. Because what it, it's actually bringing up and dealing with, I'd yes. say, is like work. It's yes. like work. you got to you know, self-study, self-work. So, right. you know, so we, I think what would be good is if we take a step back and just, because again, like you, mm -hmm. most people in our community, when I heard about psychedelics for the first time, I was like, mm -hmm. well, that ain't our thing. That's not what, you know, what we're dealing mm -hmm. with. And it is our thing and it is what we deal with in mm -hmm. essence. But with that said, it's just understanding, because these words are loaded. Mm -hmm. So when people hear the word drugs, mm -hmm. psychedelics, yes. I think of the same thing that I thought of was the white boys I went to school with. Yeah, that's yeah, their yeah. world, that's what they deal yeah, with. Yeah, 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 rock and roll and that. Yeah, you know man, we do it with the yeah, yeah, yeah. rum, do it yeah, with our weed, that's yeah, yeah, our yeah. thing and that's their thing. Yeah. Yeah. 
But um, again, that's not the case. But when you look at the words, like the word psychedelic, yes. the word itself means yes. psychedelic. It means yes. to clear the mind right. or to manifest the psyche. Right. Yeah, so that's what you're dealing with. Another word that is described as entheogens. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So the word entheogen basically means to generate the God or the divine within. Mm -hmm. That's what these things are actually dealing with. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and so when you're dealing with these plants, if you've got an addiction or you've got a trauma, mm -hmm. what it's going to allow you to do is clear your mind, mm -hmm. go within your psyche, mm -hmm. and generate the divine within that allows you to deal with that. You're, it's going to support you getting to the root of the problem. Mm -hmm. Whereas the way we are primarily dealt with this back home, it's a preventative measure. Right. It's going to stop you from becoming an addict. It's right. going to prevent you from big, picking up these traumas right, and these right, anxieties right. that right. We, we carry with because you confront yourself, you see yourself in the mirror from when you're little you and you mm. start these rites of passages when you're introduced to these plants. Mm -hmm. A lot of them now, they're being used as a way of healing or medicine mm -hmm. simply because of the world we live in, the status in, mm -hmm. the, the kind of psyches that have been you know, created off the back of that. So yeah, these are non-addictive. You can check out somebody called Dr. Professor Nutt, mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, Dr. David Professor Nutt, mm -hmm. and um, he actually lost his job because he was commissioned by the government to do the research on these psych drugs full stop. Mm -hmm. He had to do a research on all the drugs and the Harm, you know, just the harmfulness of dangerous drugs, recreational drugs. So um, he covered everything, everything from you know cocaine, heroin, you know coffee, even in fact, all the way and all the psychedelic drugs. Mm. And like you can just go on the internet now and Google his name as well as the, the safety of these drugs or mm. the lack of safety that some of these drugs may have. It's really easy if you don't want to read. I always tell people just punch that in Google. Mm -hmm. YouTube will bring you the chart. If people remember how to watch a graph, yes. you know what I'm saying our graphs work. Mm -hmm. You see right at the top end with all the most dangerous, harmful yeah, things yeah, yeah. that's going on. Mm -hmm. You see alcohol, cigarettes, heroin, mm -hmm. all the, even things that we. Are actually comfortable using in our mm -hmm, community mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And right at the bottom of the list that just about makes a mark on the graph is mm. mushrooms right, right, you right. need to physically eat about 10 times your body weight for mushrooms to be physically harmful to you right. it's physically impossible for you to do that I mean it's like so we can without me going there pushing you know like how safe that's like that's all I need to see, knowing mm -hmm. that it's done by the people who mm -hmm. do the research, mm -hmm. who tell you what's safe and what's not safe, mm -hmm. but we still go to the doctors, mm -hmm. and when they prescribe us the thing, we don't question that, even mm -hmm. though we know we don't understand what's on, mm -hmm. you know, on the labels and all that type of stuff, then we feel comfortable doing it. So the same people who present you that information present to you mm -hmm. saying that, hey, these things are actually really safe for you too, they're non-addictive, right. and they have not just the physical, it's not, he looked at not just how it physically affects you, but also the knock-on effect. Mm -hmm. So for example, say, I could be, you know, I could be an alcoholic, let's say, or addicted to the drink, mm -hmm. and that's affecting me, my body and all the rest of it. But there's a knock-on effect, how that affects my family. Mm -hmm. What if I jump in a car and drive and knock somebody over, you know? So they looked at the whole frame of right. how do these drugs impact individuals as well as the community. And once again, you see my family right at the bottom of the, of the mm -hmm. graph there, mm -hmm. saying that they're the, the safest right. things to work with. So it's an interesting point, you know, because, you know, when we're, again, comparing it to the, the, the whole situation with, like, ganja, Originally, people referred to it as a sacrament. Yeah, yeah it was it was ritualistic, yeah. but there are many people use it recreationally, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and I'm assuming that that's partly why people associate um, psychedelics with what you're talking about in terms of you know white boys and that kind of thing because mm -hmm. that's where you find it seen or see it used recreationally. Yeah, man. But what you're talking about is 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 a more sacramental for sure. Tactic. And at the same time, and I sit here and I say comment as well. Recreational is cool too, man. Right, like, right, I'm not right. against the recreational. No, no, yeah, but, yeah, 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 yeah. But it's just knowing mm. what are these things for. You know, right. what are they for? How do you utilize them? Mm. So you know, being straight. You know, I'm a smoker. Mm -hmm. I was not introduced to marijuana from a conscious. It was a recreational. <laughs> thing, was like, we've got a bit of rum. We've got some weed. You want to try yes, this? Yes, is yes. how you know this is how it was introduced to yes, me. So yes. due to that fact, my introduction, my relationship yes. with that plant isn't yes. how you know potentially it could have you know it could have been. Right. It was introduced right. to me from differently. Like, right. Yeah. You Quite know, like remember to you know meditate on it before you even roll. And, yes. Yes. Like, that's yes, not yes. how it was. It's like go get the Rizla. Go yes, do yes, it. Boom. Yes, boom. Yes, boom. Yes, so yes, with this, yeah, it was introduced to me as a you know a part my spiritual path that I was on. So I approached it from that perspective. But I also understand as a recreation as an everyday usage for this as well okay. you know in our culture where we come from our people use it as a day-to-day -day way of life thing mm -hmm. and so the european so the, all the cultures whose plants yeah, that they yeah. were gifted to them yeah. that's how they use these plants so let's let's go into now like the, the specifics of usage yeah in in in, in the sense of um culturally like mm -hmm. you, you you've given the general but let's go into some specifics yeah like if there is there a specific psychedelic that you know about that you can say this is how it's specifically used or for what process and you know what I'm saying that kind of thing yeah man so again I don't speak from my voice I speak from what the people who are gifted these plants say mm -hmm. what they say how they use it so mm -hmm. 
whether you're dealing with our plants like Iboga that we have back, the various uh, mushrooms that we use in Africa. Mm -hmm. You go to South America where they've got ayahuasca, they mm -hmm. say the same thing. Mm -hmm. Salvia divinorum, another one you find it in Mexico. Mm -hmm. About the people, that everybody's saying the same thing. They're mm -hmm. saying that these plants were gifted to us so we can communicate with our ancestors. Mm -hmm. It's the Bluetooth Wi-Fi technology that allows you to communicate with your ancestors. Mm -hmm. So for all of us, again, in our community, it's all about our ancestors mm -hmm. and communing. Mm -hmm this was the technology mm -hmm. that our ancestors and they still use today to do mm -hmm. that communication. That's mm -hmm. how we pick up the phone now, phone our fam, Bluetooth, mm -hmm. WhatsApp people and all the rest of it. Mm -hmm. This is the technology that enables you to do that. Okay. That's what it's for. Mm -hmm. Now there's benefits, there's additional awesome. usages or tools, you know, like the healing, the anxiety, the depression mm -hmm. and all of those things there. But mm -hmm. there's also a, a warriorship arm to it as well. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. these plants are also part of the rites of passages that young boys or young girls would utilize in their path into manhood or womanhood. Mm -hmm. So in particular, young boys from the time of eight, nine in some cases, they're being introduced to these plants, studying them, partaking in them, going out in the woods, having to identify these various plants or mm -hmm. utilizing the plants in their process for you know gathering food hunting becoming a man right, so, right, right. like so to give you an idea primarily they're gifted to just communicate with the ancestors mm -hmm. that's they're those specific so that means that if you take them at lower doses they have other properties other things that they can do for you yes. so at the very low doses that primarily what they do is just heighten your senses mm -hmm. so they make you hear see taste everything's just sharper bro. Right, everything's right, right. sharper mm -hmm. so therefore what they talk about back in the days like the hunters would use this mm -hmm. is there remember man all that like terminator mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. you can see and zoning that's how the ancestors use the technology mm -hmm. because you're going out in the night time ain't no lights mm -hmm. and you take these things at a lower dosage it sharpens your eyesight you can mm -hmm. see in the dark mm -hmm. you can hear things that are further away so mm -hmm. if you're hunting lions or snakes, whatever it is, mm -hmm. you can hear the snakes drifting, you know what I mean? This mm -hmm. is the technology, how they mm -hmm. were using it at a lower dosages. It's also used as, you know, rights within the, you know, within the feminine, mm -hmm. you know, mystery systems. So a lot of the an, um, ancestral, and it's, I won't even say ancestral, like it's that, it's ancient, but mm -hmm. it's present, it's still being done to this day. That's mm -hmm. one thing I don't want people to forget. Yes. But um, the women use that in, you know, through the whole process, through, you know, for womanhood. Mm -hmm. So they're using that through puberty, they use it during, um, conceiving children mm -hmm. during pregnancy childbirth they breastfeed their children after they take dosages of these various plants mm -hmm. so their children basically don't get locked into the matrix because mm -hmm. that's what it is down the line what i've gathered is that we carry we pick up a lot of baggage we've got so much baggage mm -hmm. and um rather than wait until you're in your 30s or 40s having a midlife crisis wondering what you're born for what you're here for the rights of passages that were set up for you to find out when you're nine years old mm -hmm. and you want to know what you're here for start this you know you start the path and mm -hmm. you have no choice to and then that's why you see these are people sitting around. It's very much like um, the Black Panther movie. You know, like you see different perspectives, just mm -hmm. like they show you, just look like it's the jungle, man. It's just the jungle out there. Mm -hmm. But when you've got the right lens with the right technology, the jungle it appears totally different, different and communicates with you totally differently. So this is how our people are dealing with this type of technology. That's how, what I feel. How did you get introduced to these, to this site? So for me, like again, I think like most of our people, I was in all the same sessions of classes that everybody else was in. Mm -hmm. I listened to the elders, the teachers, the Renakoda Shees, the Ashwa Crazies, mm -hmm. all of these brothers and sisters dropping the knowledge. And I believe just myself and a few others, we were just seriously sincere about breaking and pushing the boundaries mm -hmm. just as far as what are we getting out of sitting down in these sessions, you know, mm -hmm. hearing the brothers, the brothers keep coming over saying the same thing mm -hmm. like you know, are we really progressing, you know, mm -hmm. individually, community-wise? Mm -hmm. So it just made it forced me to delve deeper into, all right, so man, I'm talking about the Egyptian mystery system. Mm -hmm. For example, like, what was the mystery system? What is the mystery? What, mm -hmm. what were we dealing with, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? And because um, it wasn't really being answered, it was still just uh, around and it's in these books and stuff. And it led me to, you know, wanting to learn more about the esoteric arts like yoga mm -hmm. and meditation and, you know, just how do we apply this knowledge? Man, are telling me I've got melanin, man, are telling me I've got chakras and kundalini energy and all this type of stuff. But how do you utilise it outside of reading it in the manual from someone who I've gathered is learning or studied it just like me? Mm -hmm. So with that said, I went to my plug of Ozana Moata books mm -hmm. and I'm getting to tell them there's a few times now this subject of psychedelics comes up. Bobby Hemmett in particular mentioned it in one of his talks and he referenced a book called DMT, The Spirit Molecule. Mm -hmm. And um, what he was taught, he was just like, in it, if you know Bobby Hemmett, man, he was just really good. You're like, man, this shit is all about melanin. Mm -hmm. This stuff, what they're doing is just about the mysteries of melanin. And I was like, huh? And then when I read the book, I was like, oh, shit. Because inside the book now, they're dealing with, you know, the science of DMT. That's known as dimethyl, dimethyl tryptamine. Mm -hmm. Again, another psychedelic that you find naturally in the body, produced by the pineal gland, based upon the people who've done the research and um, working with them same kind of receptors. But in this book, um, DMT, the spirit molecule by Rick Strassman, 
breaks down DMT, the molecule, he calls it the spirit molecule, and then within that he, does, he shares some of the research that he done or he was allowed to do, he got the license to do this research, working with his patients and DMT. And he was working with patients who supposedly, or who had near-death experiences. Right. Yeah? So he's comparing this psychedelic experience to a near-death experience. Don't forget, I told you, our ancestors used to use these plants to communicate with the dead, mm -hmm. to go to the death realm. So mm -hmm. this book just opened me up to think, like, rah, like, what? The, he's got something in there, but I'm, I'm just, I was still naive to the subject. I was mm -hmm. still like, psychedelics ain't our thing, but at the same time, Bobby's made reference to this. Let me check it out. Mm -hmm. And I've delved into this book now, bro, and cut a long story short. It was the testimonies of the people, these European people who were having these experiences with DMT, mm -hmm. who were coming back and saying, yeah, I, I was sitting in a lab, and they, this, in this case, they inject the DMT, you know, the chemical into the internet the so they can control the dosage. And the people saying, look, I was sitting in a lab. I knew that this was potentially going to be a spiritual experience, but I didn't think it would happen because I'm sitting in a hospital, you know, in a hospital. Mm -hmm. But just a little did I know, it didn't matter where I was, so that was very key to me, no matter where she was, there was in America, in a hospital, mm -hmm. and she said that she got transported to the ancient Kemet, she was meeting these African goddesses and kings and queens that were telling about herself and her lifetime, and this is pretty much consistent throughout the book. Mm -hmm. and I'm sitting there thinking, hold on a minute, but you know, from my naivety at the time, I'm like, but that's our stuff, like, how comes they're getting access? Like, well, what's that about? <laughs> I mean, like, that, that's not how it's supposed to run, but that is how it runs, because that, when you're, when you're opening up to, the, to oneness or to the universe, you see that it's limitless, you know what I'm saying? And everybody can access everything if you choose to go, you know, choose to go that route. So with that said, I was inspired. That's where I first really came up. <laughs> I'm like, oh, that's what I'm you, trying. You didn't want to meet Ramesses. <laughs> yeah, and I never think you. So then when I'm sitting, checking Rosanna and saying, look, this stuff's coming up, but I'm not too sure about it. She then referenced Kalinde as well. And yes. I'm like, but I know Kalinde. He's the martial arts guy. Mm, mm, mm. I want to do martial arts. That's right. from a long time. Right, right, moving right. into wanting to deal with these plants. And yes. She basically said, look, check out this DVD, man. And then within his DVD, between that DMT, the spirit molecule, mm -hmm. and his DVD, where he spoke my language, he showed mm -hmm. all the comedic glyphs, all the mm -hmm. Asian Africa stuff that I'm familiar with, but mm -hmm. just showed us the stuff that was re that resonated with me, or the stuff that I missed, as he would say, hidden in plain sight. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, yeah, I've seen the, you know, the judgment scene of my art and all that, and be like, this is the mushroom, this is the duh, this is, I'm like, huh? I'm like, okay. And then from that point, I just kind of started picking up the baton. And me personally, it was like, because I realised how much I judged it, mm -hmm. you know, like, boy, this ain't our team from back in school days, right mm -hmm. up to the point where I'm seeing and reading that this is what our people deal with, but mm -hmm. I'm like, nah, it's not what we deal with. Mm -hmm. And I thought, I'm just being as ignorant as the people that are pointing fingers at without having the experience. Yeah. And then, boom, bro, I had the experience and life ain't been the same since and there's no turning back. Let's, let's, let's talk about the, 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 the elder now, ancestor, yeah? Baba um, Kalinde. Now, just, who is he for people that don't know? For me, personally, he's Morpheus. I mean, he's my Morpheus. <laughs> yeah, he's, I guess he's for many others as well. But again, his history is that Kalinde, like, he's a legend, bro. So, you know, in, in the States primarily, mm. he was part of, you know, the Pan African conscious movement mm -hmm. before I was born. I mean, mm -hmm. and that's where he was rooted in. But he had a focus of martial arts. Mm -hmm. And, you know, based on his studies of martial arts, he uncovered the fact that martial arts had its origins in Africa. Mm -hmm. Therefore, he spent over 20, 40 plus years, you know, going around the world talking about that. Mm -hmm. And um, how me and him connected was through, through that work. But when I finally got to that point, I'm like, this is what this brother's dealing with. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, hold on a minute, but I've seen you before. You don't talk about this. Mm. Like, you talk about the martial arts. Like, mm. He was there a few years ago. He was dealing. And he's like, bro, that's all the groups ever invite me over to, to speak, to, to speak right. about. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. I always want to come and talk about this thing, mm. but I get shut down. And he goes, like, our people just don't receive this information. Mm. He goes, I've been here every year. He said, literally, he's come here for like 20 plus years every year. Teach about the African origins of martial arts. Mm. He goes, as soon as I start talking about mushrooms, people just shut down, get quiet, and or they leave the room. And I was like, well, we're going to make, we're going to shift that man because i do events in it as i'm telling mm -hmm. you i'm doing these events mm -hmm. we're going to bring you over and make sure we can create a platform where that can be heard more and it started off well but again it just started to decline as mm -hmm. the truth was coming out mm -hmm. as to because it makes us feel slightly uncomfortable so that's the journey the brother was on for like before i got into the game so i always talk about just stand on his shoulders mm -hmm. in that regards but he delved into teaching and sharing that through his journey in martial arts he came across the mystery that encoded in martial arts or martial arts should i say is encoded in the psychedelic experience in magic mushrooms okay and he was as cocky as we would say to say that martial arts come out of the mushrooms yoga comes out of mushrooms ancient chemic full stop comes out of mushrooms and i'm like huh? 
So these were the things that he so, was... Some big claims right there, you know. <laughs> yeah, he's like... Might just jam some mushrooms and just be some pyramid, you know what I mean? Yeah, so he, was, uh, he was moving, he's like, so where do you think you got the blueprints from? Where are the right. maps from that? Where's the science? Where's the okay. technology from? So, and when you understand the story, no different from the story of the martial artist who will go to the cave, the hill, the mountain, mm -hmm. some remote place to have this heightened experience where you might find a martial artist, master and all the rest of it, come back to the community and gift them with the knowledge. Right. That's what Kalinde done on his own journey. Right. We share that that's a principle that lies within martial arts as mm -hmm. well as the, you know, the psychedelic experience, how these plants were gifted to the people and how they utilised them. Mm -hmm. So what Kalinde was big about, you know, primarily not just taking psychedelics, but he was known for what's known as the high dose experience. He was very clear that for us to do the work, to lighten our load and to move into still becoming, because some of us think we've reached a peak you know, where we're humans and we're at the peak of our mm -hmm. existence. He's like, nah, this is just like we're still at the infant stage of mm -hmm. where, you know, with this journey and, you know, the higher those experiences, which in some schools of thought is crazy, you know, mm -hmm. the idea of taking these high amounts is what actually pushes you into those realms mm -hmm. where you then start communing with the ancestors mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. all that type of stuff where you're moving past the recreation of those where you can just feel good, which is cool. Yeah. You can work on your anxiety and your headaches and them kind of things there. Mm -hmm. But it's like, if you want to do the work, and you want to meet a saw, and you want to meet Tahuti, mm -hmm. and yeah, you need to kind of push the boundary slightly with the dosages. Well, so, uh, last question on, on, on the Baba, and I want to get into something else, but the, um, what would you request people watch or read from him? I would just say that you just need to jump on YouTube, mm -hmm. and type his name, K-I-L-I-N-D-I, -I 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 yeah. I -I -I and that's it. Like, there's nothing I can have. I mean, there's particular talks that I was a part of, I helped facilitate, so right. there's one called... Um, or, um, high dose to organic singularity. Mm -hmm. so that's one of like the deep heavy ones. For organic me. singularity, you know. Yeah, so if you're familiar with the singularity concept yes, and yes, the yes. whole world that we're moving into, Kalinde made it really clear about the organic technology that, because right. we're moving in that direction whether we like it or not, right. but there's an organic technology that supports us and still becoming. And I, I suppose that that's, that's differentiated from the kind of uh, cybernetic singularity or yeah, yeah, robotic singularity type it, concept. Right. Because they've actually got those blueprints from nature. They've got that knowledge from psychedelics. Of course, of course. Knowledge and wisdom yeah. of that, how that functions and works. These are blueprints that they've gathered from nature. They're, they're calling it biomimicry now. And it is. All that type yeah, of stuff. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah, right. Right. Looking at the body, studying the body yes. and making versions of yes, that, but yes, yes. already existing mm. in, in the ethers. Right, the right, right, right. Yeah. Now, now I, I'm, I'm uh, relatively well studied here yeah, on... Uh, on African spiritual systems mm -hmm. and and it's and initiatory processes yeah because mm -hmm. like not not anybody and everybody deals with everything mm -hmm. you have to mm -hmm. go through training um, to, to be able to handle and manage mm -hmm. certain mm -hmm. things responsibly mm -hmm. so when you're talking about pushing beyond certain realms mm -hmm. I'm assuming that th those things are best done within a within an order if that makes sense correct mm -hmm. me if I'm wrong so I, I, as somebody who studies African spiritual systems here, yeah, I understand that um, collectively speaking, people are taken through processes of initiation mm. because we understand that not everybody can deal with everything and in, in order to manage certain things, yeah, you, have to be, you, have to be, you have to be trained, you have to be guided, yeah, you, have to, you have to learn how to. Yeah? And so I'm, I'm saying that in particular in relation to what you're talking about in terms of pushing beyond certain boundaries. Yeah? So I would say I'm assuming that um, in, in relation to that, those things are best done in this context as a part of some order or some communal process with, with elders who are experienced and can guide uh, that process. Mm -hmm. So there's definitely that arm to this, and that's what I say, it's an arm to this. Mm -hmm. um, again, coming from you know, the teachings, man, you know, these things became mm -hmm. due to institutions, even our own institutions back home on the mm -hmm. continent, mm -hmm. whereas in what if those if those frameworks are set up mm -hmm. to allow the individual mm -hmm. to have a direct experience mm -hmm. me personally that's what they were about mm -hmm. once you start seeing that they were set up in a framework so that you've got to go through somebody mm -hmm. you know an elder mm -hmm. or a priest a shaman a babalao a ganga who's preventing you mm -hmm. consciously or unconsciously from having a direct experience mm -hmm. then i'm not for that i'm personally not for right. those types of frameworks mm -hmm. and that's what unfortunately a lot of our systems became mm -hmm. because we put human beings up there and gave them a title mm -hmm. and a platform Mm -hmm. and they've kind of ran with that and like Kalinde would t teach you know it's like yeah then it's like boy so for this to run you know I need your wife I need the children mm -hmm. I need your goats and like humans start becoming humans and doing what humans do mm -hmm. whereas in what this experience really does for the individual mm -hmm. it puts you on your path mm -hmm. and it's the only teacher 
Mm. You know, like that's how I was. In, this is that is the teacher, mm -hmm. and you know you, what you're guided and are supported in is just, or what I would say is like just man holding space, facilitating you having your journey. Like I was taught of the alone into the alone, mm -hmm. and nobody can't walk this path. There's no after your mum help you cross the road a few times. It's like you got to cross it yourself in it. Mm -hmm. So that's what those people are there for, just to support you in getting across the road a few times, or just getting to the point where like you see the green man, mm -hmm. when you see the green man, mm -hmm. you can cross. Mm -hmm. When it's the red man, you stay here. You got that, but you got to walk that road by yourself. So mm -hmm. that's where what I've got until we lost a lot of that. Where we've got the power of the the leaders, the you know, and we've got what we've got today because the system that we got here has been inspired by our systems. You know, like mm -hmm. the our, it's our you know our systems at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. So if we're going back to the essence of what these ex rituals and ceremonies were about, which was about putting you on for mm -hmm. real mm -hmm. to do your path, and you would then know that my commitment is to the collective. Mm -hmm. It's not an ego thing. Like I've got to do this myself. Mm -hmm. I don't need. Mm -hmm. It's like yeah, but only you can go in that cave, son, and mm -hmm. see what you've got to bye see bye. inside there. And when you come back, you share that with the collective. Yes, we give you the nod, mm -hmm. and then we move forward. But it's mm -hmm. like, yeah, you discover, so to speak. So, mm -hmm. when somebody is in the middle of that mm -hmm. direct experience, which a lot of this has become, then like, I'm not personally, I'm not for that. But I understand we do need some kind of reference or yeah. framework to, mm -hmm. to work with. But I think it should be more organically kind no. of developed in that way. Now, appreciate that. When it, when it, when it comes to, so I, I want to just do a couple things in terms of examples now. Because you mm -hmm. said that. Um, mushroom Bill, Bill Kemet, yeah, <laughs> a very serious claim that, yeah. yeah so, um, so now we know the secret to the pyramids and the, and the, and the, the harem at kings and queens, the Sphinx. Um, but in that respect, um, where it, and there are some historians watching this right now thinking, well, mm -hmm. where can we find that? Where is that on the walls or in the papyri? Um, can you answer that? Yeah, man, yeah, man, yeah, man. So, I mean, if you're, you're dealing with Kemet, all right, primarily, so again, I always talk about Kemet because that's what I love to. Mm -hmm. Most of us are familiar with the dynastic period of yes. Kemet, you know, mm -hmm. from Dynasty One moving forward. Mm -hmm. So that's the unification of Upper and Lower Kemet, mm -hmm. King Nam, all of that mm -hmm. good stuff. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. why we're all familiar with Asar, mm -hmm. the Set, and that. Mm -hmm. But we've got a pre-dynastic. Pre yeah, we've got a pre-dynastic right. history mm -hmm. that birthed the dynastic. Yes, sir. You know, the dynastic mm -hmm. um, dynasties. Now, all of those archetypes or deities on the tier, for mm -hmm. lack of a better word, mm -hmm. on the tier as they are. Mm -hmm. um, are, or later become like the dark archetypes, mm -hmm, the mm -hmm. bad, the evil ones in the mm -hmm. systems. We know better, they stand alongside all mm -hmm. of the tier, they're one and the same, mm -hmm. they're all part of the same psyche, you mm -hmm. know? Mm -hmm. So with that said, um, those pre dynasties if you jump into their mythologies, mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. you find a lot of the juice, a lot of the information. Mm -hmm. Again, it's hidden in plain sight, but it filters through to archetypes like Anubis or mm -hmm. Anpu, mm -hmm. um, um, Set, mm -hmm. you know, Set Typhon, mm -hmm. and even the first, you know, the first deities on the tier in the solar deity in the solar pantheons that were brought to us, you know, like Bess and mm -hmm. Patar. Yeah. So we say these are the earliest, they're like the Memphi theology, mm -hmm. they're dealing with the, the small people, you know, the so called twa. Would that would that include Min? Yeah, you're dealing, mm -hmm. yeah, man. All see all them sexual gods. I, I, I ask them. that because obviously Min is is is, is agriculture, fertility, yeah, nature. That, that 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 and that's what you're dealing with because Flor V.